Hello everyone and welcome back. It's been a while since my last tutorial and after that I saw the interest you had in the tutorial series about creating in this house, I thought it was time to create another pixel building using the features that come up with the Blender 3.0. I uploaded the block out of this project on pietrocurvo.com so you can have like the 3D base of the structure and with the right scale in order to follow in a proper way the tutorial and have something to start with. You can find the link in the description and you can download it for free. So now let's jump into it. So the first thing that I've done is the block out of the model. So after that I deleted the default cube, I imported an image reference of the building I'm going to create. In this case it's Bonnie's house from Toy Story 4. You can find this reference on the web, but actually it's a really low resolution, so you can download the render that I put on my art session portfolio and follow the tutorial with these renders. The first thing to do once you have to import the image inside Blender is to set the scale of this reference. So in order to do that, I selected the plane, I go in edit mode and using the meter tool, I define a 2 meters elements. This element of 2 meters is for me like the reference for the size of the door, which is like the more or less the standard um, size of a door. And then all we need to do is to scale the reference in order to fit these elements. So now we can define the block out of the building. That's usually a really simple process, but in this case we have only one image reference with a low resolution, so we need to take our time to actually study the image in order to have a 3D view in our mind before putting it into a blender. So take your time to actually study the reference and then you can start in from a plane, define the base shape and you know, extrude the things, place the door, place the windows and actually define the entire building. It's a really simple process but it's something that will uh, require a bit of time and that's the reason why i uploaded the best mesh on my website so you can have a base uh, model to actually start and follow the tutorial so right after the block out what we need to do is to actually bring some details in the environment in the structure in the building so here what you have to do is to actually study once again the image reference and try to get all the details that you can and bring them in the 3D model. That's also the reason why Pixar is so famous because in their beautiful movies, even though they are like cartoonish things, they put a lot of details. You can see the veins of the wood, you can see even if there is like some rust, some dust things, um, even broken glass, you know, uh, not perfectly glare, you know, th this kind of glossy on the um, material, on the glass, like some fingerprint and stuff like that. So that's uh, the reason why we need to take our time to actually define the details of the building. Um, if we want to bring this kind of realism, even though it's not photorealism, not a real world photorealism, but it's like a cartoonish realism, I will say, we need to take our time and actually try to get everything that we can from the reference that we have. So here I created some windows, I created the door, the columns, and even, you know, spend some time to create some kind of imperfections in the shape of the polygons. For instance, we can naturally take our time to define a not perfect shape for the door. We can also start to ascend some materials. So we can like define which parts of the door are like glossy or are like glass, you know, transparent, and the one that actually are like wood. So here is part of the process that we need to 
take our time, not speed up. You can even do a break and then start once again. Or even you can do it once and if you are not happy, do it once again. I mean, take your time and do your best because that's one of the key points of the creation of the structure. So going over with the modeling, I focus on the roof of the building. So I force create the plane to fill up the hole of the structure and separate it from the base model. Then I created a tile, duplicating one face of the plane of the roof. I extruded the plane, set the thickness and pressed Ctrl B to bevel the edge. And as soon as I was satisfied with the shape, I used the array modifier to place the tiles along the roof. After that, I randomly selected some tiles and rotated them in place in order to create this kind of real world imperfections. Once the model of the house is ready, we can focus on the exterior. Here, starting from a flat plane, we can define the area around the house, the garden, the street, the road and the sidewalk. In that moment, I noticed that I haven't created the garage. But that's not a big problem because we have already done the house. So what I did here was to actually select the front face of the house, duplicate the panel separate from the main model, and then I just extruded this face and created the garage. Here I duplicated even the tiles I created the roof and placed four simple wooden planks on the four corner of the garage. And that's so really simple. It was not a big problem, but actually that's a way you can do things in a quick way with a good result.
Now that we have the entire area ready, we need to create the materials. But before creating the materials, we need to create the UV map of the assets. There are different ways to create the UV map of a model, and this basically depends on the kind of project of media that you are going to create. If you are creating a game, you may prefer a tiling texture to reduce the size of the project or and even the amount of texture, or you can move for uh, like a different approach, like um, in movies, movie prop, war, where you could prefer to actually unwrap everything in a single map. In this case, adopt it for a quick and useful solution related to this last method, the smart UV. All you need to do is to select the faces of the model per material. So, for instance, select all the wood material, all the glass material, all the metal material. And for each material, apply the smart UV project to generate the UVs of each material. After that, you can just export the element. I usually use the FBX format and import it in Substance Painter. Yeah, I know what you are thinking. That's a Blender tutorial and I'm gonna use Substance Painter for the material painting. Yes, that's true and that's what I'm going to do. And the only reason why uh, I'm doing it is because I can do it uh, faster. You can create the mask that I'm doing, you can create the material, you can place the material, you can paint the material, like I will do in this step here. But the only reason why I'm not using Blender is because even though I've been using Blender for like 12 years now, or even more, but unfortunately Blender is still a step back for the material of painting, especially for the usability and for the you know optimization of time. So that's the only reason why I'm using Substance, uh, not other reason. Um, but you can follow this step here to actually understand the colors of the elements and even the kind of material that I'm using. So the veins of the wood, the kind of roughness for the glass and stuff like that. We'll play some music just to have something to listen. Um, you can follow this part here or you can move to the other step related to the import of the texture in Sub Blender. Okay, now I'm curious to know how many of you skipped the, the Substance Painter step. Leave a comment below to let me know. Um, but yeah, now we are back in Blender and all we have to do is to import the texture and set up the material. Um, to do so, one of the things that you can do in just one click is to use the node wrongler to actually set uh, all the PBR materials in the node editor panel. In this case, I'm not use the um, I'm not going to use the node wrongler because I exported the um, packed version of texture for Unreal. So in this way, I can use like an optimized version of texture even for Unreal if I want to use the model there. Um, in this case, uh, what I have to do, especially to have the data for the brownness and for the metallic, since I'm using an ARM format which include roundness, 
ambient occlusion, alpha and the even metallic information one texture. All I have to do is to separate the RGB channels and then link those materials. So that's the only reason why you will see a different node and you will see that I am going to separate one texture in three different channels to use them. But um, yeah, once that you apply all the texture that you generated um, and so that once that the material ready, all we have to do is to focus, focus in other details. So in this final step, my main purpose was to actually make the environment look real. To do so, the key was to diversify everything. So diversify the vegetables, the environments around, place some grass, different kind of grass because the preset from Blender was great, but actually it was like a preset, so really basic. And then you have to place different kind of flowers, uh, even change the rotation of the tree, uh, change a bit the ground, you know, it's really flat, so just scoop a bit, change the polygon. It's a real process where you try to think about everything uh, try to focus on in each details of everything because you know you are really really close to the end um, with that uh, of course uh, it is never an end especially in 3d because you will always check everything even when you restart to render then you focus and you find out there is an error there is a, something missing there is a texture flipped and uh, stuff like that so Actually, in this step, what I've done was to try to improve the environment as much as I can. Some of the things done, even uh, out of camera, was to actually um, create uh, the lighting. And basically, the lighting is upon light for the interior, just to make it a bit brighter, and to be able to see a bit inside. And then the sunlight for the stereo. I placed even um, HDRI for the sky to be able to have like a board map or something to watch around and then I created with the Hive tool inside of Blender interior to Blender uh, the Ivy in the frame so in the facade of the, of the building and that's a process really really interesting really you know um, but actually you can even bring other models that you have for instance, I placed the Vespa that I did in the previous video to this one. Um, you know, it's a sort of set dressing for the environment. You have to bring all that you think may, may work with the project in order to have like a really good living environment. Then, before hitting the F12 button, I create a really simple sequence of camera. Uh, you know movements uh, just panning movements something really simple and when I was happy with the result I just press F12 and wait for the render to finish and that's all guys we did it we created a Pixar style project something at least similar it was a really fun project to do um, it was for sure challenging because you know when you are like uh, going to compete with uh, a studio like Disney Pixar try to recreate the same level of detail is really challenging but, um, I think there are some things that can be done uh, better in a you know proper way yeah, spending for sure more time but considering it's like a six hours uh, you know uh, process I think the result is really good um, but I want to know from you what you think if there are things that you you think uh, can be improved and what you would like to do so leave a comment below i would like really to see your result from this tutorial you know i would like to see your render what you come up with so if so you can tag me on instagram with your render once it's ready uh, i will repost them in the stories it was really fun um, i hope you enjoyed the video if so leave a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and see you soon